Tall Stories of Revenge, Chapter 19. Tall Paul raced by the sound of paws scurrying across the starlit clearing. He peered through the grass opening and saw a hog cart heading for the nursery. Is Meadow happy? Is Meadow still helping her kids? It had been a quarter moon since Sandcross had died. Her kids were well overdue. Palebird's face appeared at the nursery entrance, eyes wound with worry. They're coming! She whispered to Hawkheart. The medicine cat shooed her back and slid into the deck. Topaw rested his muzzle on the soft wood and lining of his nest. Being stuck in camp since the accident made him feel tired, not rested. He didn't think about running anymore, feeling the wind in his fur. Every time he imagined practicing battle moves with Don Stripe again or running across the moor, Gil tightened his throat. Sandgrass would war would be watching from Star Clan, his eyes dark with disappointment. You were born to be a tunneler. His father's words rang in Telpa's head. You can't change that, whatever any other cat tells you. He must have dozed up because it was lighter when the chatter of the clanmates woke him. They were clustering outside the nursery. Dilly, Whisker, and Whiteberry had pushed their way to the front. Lark, Flash, and Uppledon circled a pale bird beside the meeting hollow. They were showering with questions. Is Mel simple, okay? How many kids are there? What did Hickory say? Hickory no say when he saw them. For once, pale bird's eyes were bright. Talpaw climbed out of his nest, pricking his ears as she answered the warrior's questions. Three kids, she announced. Hickory Nose is delighted. He's named the Tom Hopkit. One of his pawns is a little crooked. But he'll be fine. Another, there's another Tom. Pigeon Kit. He's dark and gray. He's dark gray and white. And there's a she kit. Cyril Kit. She's gray and brown. Tall. Pale bird sat back, ears twitching with light. They're beautiful. Hung in the moment they arrived. And the star purred. Wing Clan will need more warriors. Plume caught eyed her sharply. Let's hope Hickory and Nose insist they become tunnelers. Let's hope they grow up healthy and strong, the star meowed. Bass nosed in among the clan cats. Rena's ginger fur flashed beside her. They seemed excited as the warriors. Sparrow watched from a tusk, staring at the nursery with an unreadable expression while Hairflight and Reclop paced excitedly beside him. This is the first good thing to happen in one clan in moons, Hairflight enthused. The roaches have brought luck to the clan, Red Claw gushed. Luck? Telepop bristled. He imagined the pleasure he would get from sinking his claws deep into Sparrow's short brown fur. What do you care, itself? Telpa sniffed. They're clan cat, the clan kits, not roaches. Rena stepped in front of him, his eyes, eyes flashing. Of course I care, she exclaimed. They're wind clan cats. Stop acting like you're one of them, Telpa girl. If you hadn't come, Sam Gross would still be alive. Rena gasped. We helped you fight off Shadow Clan. Rena curled, Tapa curled his lips. Sparrow took my father into a tunnel and left him to die. Sparrow said, turned. Tapa watched the roach's expression from the corner of his eye. He looked more curious and angry. Tapa dug his claws into the ground. Was Sparrow? Too much for a coward to fight for his honor? Weasel heart, he hissed. Don't you dare blame Sam Sparrow for Sam Gross's death. She spat. Your father knew those tunnels were unsafe, but he took Sparrow down there anyway. Sparrow could have been killed too, but he wasn't, Talpa meowed, mewed coldly. He looked at Sparrow, but the roach had turned back to hair flight and aspen fall. Now he's got more friends in Wing Clan than I have. You've turned mean, Talpa, Venus Bat. That's why you've got no friends anymore. Whenever a cat comes near you, you bite their head off. So, Talpa hissed, at least I don't kill them. See what I mean? Rena's gaze hardened. 
Why don't you talk to me once you've finished feeling sorry for yourself? She turned and stalked away, her tail twitching angrily. Paws thumb in the grass as Shrupa whisked past Talpa. Whisked past. Hey, Rina! Together they disappeared among the cats gathered outside the nursery. Talpa headed for the camp entrance. Let them all chow like starlings. I don't care. Wait for me! Flailfoot's meow rasped behind him. I'm just going for a walk. Don't try and stop on mother. Don't try and stop me. I wasn't going to. Flailfoot fell in beside him. Is this your first time out since the accident? You mean since Sandgrass was killed? Talpa pushed through the heather. Flailfoot thought, if you put it that way. Then yes, it's my first time. Outside camp, the wind snatched at Talpa's fur, and he shivered, forgetting how cold it could feel. He took the rabbit trail that led to the grassy slopes below the moor hop. The moor top. The blossom was beginning to fade, but as it dropped from the bushes, it gave a few sweeter scent, a far sweeter scent than before. Talpa breathed it in, opening his mouth to let it bathe his tongue. Flailfoot padded along beside him. You must have missed the moor, I guess. They waved, they weaved in. They weaved on in silence, the brushes, the bushes brushing Talpa's pelt, sprinkling his fur with purple blossoms. As they broke from the heather and onto the grassy slope, Talpa felt the wind tug his ears. He also had forgotten how, how it could spark excitement in his paws. Suddenly he wanted to run till his chest hurt. He glanced at Flailfoot. The old Tom's whiskers twitched. Go on, he urged. Run, I can tell you're longing to... Talpa plunged forward, his legs stiff at first, but loosening as he haired across the grass. Ears flat and tail streaking behind. He raced as hard as he could. He screwed up his eyes and the wind as the wind battered his face and felt the rush of air as he crested the moor top and saw meadows and valleys stretch before him. Talpa flew it was a speck behind him. His black pelt a smudging on the grass. Talpa whirled around in a broad of circle and raced down to meet him. Feeling better? Talpa asked as Talpa slowed down to a halt in front of him. Yes. The restlessness had suffocated Talpa while he was stuck in the camp had disappeared. Flailfoot headed up slope. Talpa paced beside him, catching his breath. The sun feels hotter out on the moor. Flailfoot purred. There's no better feeling than the sun on your pelt. Talpa stared at the old tongue like, You like it? Flailfoot kept walking. Of course. The sky, the wind, the wide open moor. They're all the blood of a wind clan cat, even tunnelers. I thought some of us preferred being underground. We get used to working in the dark, Flailfoot told him, and the challenge of building tunnels safely makes it interesting. It always feels good to come up to the surface, he winked at Talpa. We're not worms, you know. Talpa looked up. Gray, cow, gray clouds were drifting in the mountains, swallowing the blue sky. I love being in open moor. Open more than anything, he confessed. Sandrus never understood that. I think he did, Flairfoot murmured, in his own way. No. Talpa stiffened. I disappointed him so much, he mewed, but not wanting to be a tumbler. Every tumbler dreams of passing the skills, passing on the skills to their kids, of, or of working side by side with their own kin. Miss Mouse didn't, Talpa reminded him. She's glad that Doe Spring sagely been restocked for more runners. Flailfoot stopped and looked directly at Talpa. Sandgrass wanted you to be happy, you know. He had a strange way of showing it. Tal Talpa remembered the furious glare his father had given him after Heatherstar announced that the gorge tunnel was to be shut down. He didn't know he was going to die, Flailfoot rasped. If there had been more time, he would have come to accept that your dream was not his. There would have been more time to forgive and get. Talpa's throat tightened. He pictured Sandgrass puffing out his chest as Heatherstar gave Talpa his warrior name. He stopped walking, his paws suddenly heavy as stones. 
Top Sam girls loved you, Topa. Flailfoot began to <clears throat> head downhill, back toward the camp. Whatever your difference is, never forget that. Topa stayed where he was. Up there, there was nothing between him and Star Clan, but the sky. Is Flailfoot right, Sam girls? Sent up the clouds, but there was no reply. Topa shook himself and sprinted down the slope, quickly catching up the Flailfoot. What was my father like, he asked breathlessly. Was he in the tunnel? When was he in the tunnels? Sandgrass was a great planner. Flailfoot to him. He could pick out a rail over ground, it, dig it exactly the same underground. Pasta step for pasta. step. He knew the tunnels under this moor better than any other tunnels. Flailfoot's eyes glowed. But he hated worms. Worms? Yes, the old tunnel purred. Every time we hit worm soil, he'd send his tunnel mate in first. He said he'd always, he'd rather pl be plastered whiskers. He'd be plastered whisker to tail and clay and get a worm under his claw. Topa heard mused that his father could be so squeamish, but said he was only hearing about it. Just hearing about it. Why didn't I know this before? They were nearing the hollow, and Topa could see the walls of camp silhouetted in the early morning light. He glanced at Flailfoot. The old tunneler's eyes half closed. Were half closed. He was enjoying the last moments of silence felt before they headed into the shadows. Did tunnelers really love the open moor as much as their clanmates? Topa never imagined that they enjoyed being a bug brown. He thought that they'd tell him because they loved the dark and closeness of earth around them. Topa! Dawn said called to him as he nosed his way into camp. Good news! She raced across the tusks to meet him. Hawkart says you're fit enough to start training again. Topa halted. Really? Flailfoot flicked his tail along Topa's flank. Congratulations! Plumka and Willitail looked up from the rocky patch. There you are, Flailfoot, Plumka wondered. Called. We wondered where you'd gone. Where you've gone. Topa. Don striped leaned closer. Did you hear what I said? Topa and I, aren't you happy? Top Don Stripes eyes flashed with worry. Topa lifted his muzzle. I want to train as a tunneler. Boy Tail jumped to his paws. What did you just say? He bounded across the clearing toward Topa. Plumcod trotted after her den mate. That's wonderful news! Dawnstripe blinked. But you're going to be a more runner. I've changed my mind, Topa spoke slowly. More certain that he was making the right decision with every word. I want to continue what my father was doing. I want to learn them I want to learn his skills and pass them on to my kids when the time comes. But you're a great more runner, Dawnstripe argued. You've learned so much already. I know, Topa mute, but everything has changed, don't you see? Dawn Stripe shifted her paws. I suppose I'd better speak with he Heather Star. Thank you, Don Topa touched his muzzle to her cheek. I'll miss training with you. I really will, but this is something I have to do. His grief was floating away like every like mist. I must honor Sandgrass's memory and protect his skills that he valued. Don straight back to it. If you're sure, I'm sure. She turned back and headed toward Don Stripe. She turned and headed for Don Heather Star's den. Woolly Tail stopped beside him. Do you really mean this? Top on that. Completely. Don't do this for your father's sake. For your father's sake, Woolly Tail lowered his voice. Sandgrass would never want that. He was tough on you, I know, but tunnelers have to be tough. Doesn't mean he didn't understand. He was proud to see you fight for what you truly wanted, even if it wasn't what he hoped for. He'd been, he'd have been proud to see you as a moor runner, you know. Don't talk him out of it, Plumka. She shouldered her demi set. Sandgrass wouldn't have been so happy. We need so. Sandgrass would have been so happy. We need more pot. Topa met her eager gaze. Telling is my blood, Plunka. I just never realized it before. Well, that's the end of Tom Star's Revenge.
I have a Muse of the 23. As you can tell, there was a no snow day. So come on and subscribe by and chapter 20 will hopefully be posted on Saturday.